What I'm going to talk about here in this video is prime factorization. Now, this holds its basic concept in the fact that we're going to look at breaking down a number into a product of factors, but each of these factors is a prime number. Now, this comes from a fundamental idea of when we look at classifying any number, which is an integer above one. Because what we're able to do is take every number that is greater than one, so every integer value greater than one, and divide it into one of two categories, one of two classifications. It can either be a prime number, which we know only has the factors of one in itself, or it can be what's called a composite number. Now, this kind of number can be broken down into a product of prime numbers. So we could factorize that number down such that it can be represented as a product of numbers, all of which are prime. So we can express any composite number in this format. The term that we use to describe this is what's called prime factorization of a number. It's also called prime representation or prime decomposition, depending upon the material you're looking at. But any of these three terms represent the same thing. Break the number down into prime factors. Now, in order to do this, it's actually a fairly straightforward process because we systematically divide a number by the prime numbers in their order to accomplish this. So let's imagine I want you to do the example of get the prime factorization of the number 2,772. Now, first thing I'm going to tell you is learn your prime numbers. So know maybe your first, what, eight prime numbers. You know, so 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on. Yeah, learn the first, what, six to eight prime numbers and make sure you know them all off by heart. Because what we have to do is use them to divide this. Now, the easy way to do it, as I've said, is systematically work your way up. Start with a 2. If it's an even number and a multiple of 2, divide it by that. Look at the solution. Is that an even number? Yes, divide it by 2 again. Then the solution to that. Is that an even number? If it's a yes, divide it by 2 again. If it's a no, we move on to the 3. Then is it in a 3 times table? If it is, we divide it by 3. If not, we move on to the 5. Now, we don't have to use every single one of the prime numbers, but if we approach it in that manner, work our way up systematically it just makes our life a heck of a lot easier. So let's imagine I'm going to start with the original number 2772. Now it's an even number so we know we can divide it by 2. If I take 2772 and I divide it by 2 what I get is a solution of 1386. And I can then say right so I'm at 2 can I divide it by 2 again? Well it's an even number so yes I can. I'm going to divide it by 2 again. If I then divide that number by 2, what I'll end up getting is a solution of 693. Now this is no longer even, so I can't divide it by 2 anymore. So I move on, I say, right, can I divide it by 3? Well, 693 is divisible by 3, so that's the one I move on to next. <coughs> so I say, right, 693 divided by 3, what that gives me is 231. So I then say, right, 231, is that divisible by 3? Well, yes, it is. So I can then divide it by 3, and I get 77. It's no longer in the 3 times table, so I can move on. I then say, right, next prime number is 5. Is it divisible by 5? No, it's not. So I just jump the 5. Is this then divisible by 7? Well, yeah, 77 is. So if I do 77 divided by 7, I get 11. 11 is now no longer in the 7 times table, so I move on to my next prime number, which is 11. If I then divide 11 by 11, what I end up getting is 1. And now that we're at this stage, we can stop. The final number to divide is 1, so that is the final part that we're on. So essentially what this means is I've got this column here, times 1, I can't factorise it anymore. What you're then able to do is take your original number and represent it as the product of all the numbers in this column here. So I can say, fine, that tells me that 2,772 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 7 times 11. Now, you may be asked to represent it in this manner or as powers of primes. So, for example, you may be asked to represent it as powers. So you'd have 2 squared times 3 squared. Remember, this dot here means product of. Then times 7 times 11. Now you may be asked to represent it in terms of products of all the prime numbers, so that would include the 5. And in that case, if there is nothing of it, so as we have with the 5, I'd do 2 squared times 3 squared, then it would be times 5 to the power of 0. Remember, anything to the power of 0 is just 1. 
then I'd have my times 7, then my times 11. So these two, quite commonly asked for in terms of the format of your solution. But you can represent it any of those ways and get the same answer. And to double check it, fire in a calculator. You should get 2,772. Prime factorization of the number, it's not that difficult if we follow it systematically. Yeah, If we have a method and we have a technique for doing it, we're able to follow this method and technique and actually get our solutions fairly quickly and easily so that we can finish the question and get the answer we're after. Now this allows me to then tell you a few key things to remember when it comes to looking at prime factorization and decomposition of numbers. First thing is just to remind you of that first point that I said about classification of number. Every integer greater than one can be written as either a prime number or product of prime numbers, as we said. So it's prime or it's composite. And every integer greater than one is divisible by a prime number. So if we have a composite number, we can break it down into a product of primes, hence it's divisible by at least one prime number. So for example, four can be written down as two times two, so two squared. 2 is a prime number, so it's divisible by that prime number itself. Third thing I want you to remember is that there's infinitely many prime numbers. You don't have to remember them all, don't worry, or remember a stupid amount, but there are infinitely many prime numbers. Now Euclid proved this in his Elements publication, where he used proof by contradiction in order to do it. So look that up if you're interested. But the key thing to remember is that there's infinitely many prime numbers. Fourth thing I want you to remember is if we have a prime number, let's call it P, and it divides a number which is given by a product of prime numbers, so P1, P2, P3, P4, all the way up to Pn, so there's a finite number of prime numbers, what that means is that P, the prime number that divides this, has to equal one of those prime numbers, let's call it Pk, for a value of k which exists between 1 and n. So if we're able to divide it by a prime number, essentially what I'm telling you, is if I can divide it by a prime number, and I've got it decomposed into product of primes, that prime number I'm dividing by has to be one of those prime numbers. Fairly straightforward idea and actually quite intuitive to think about. Fifth thing I want you to remember, an important bit here, is that any positive integer can be prime factorized in one and only one way. So 2,772, we couldn't factorize that anymore because all the factors were now prime numbers, and prime numbers can only be divided by themselves in one. We couldn't take any of those factors any further. So there was only one way for us to do it. This is what's referred to as the prime factorization theorem, or the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Something to bear in mind when you're working with it. When you get to that final solution, there's no other way to get to it, and there's no other way to represent it. Now, prime factorization, we could just look at applying it to a single number. How do we break it down? There we go. But the questions get a lot more complex than that. So I'm going to show you a slightly more complex question, which has its rootings in this idea, and then that'll be us. So let's imagine that, firstly, I want you to show that if 3x plus 4, where x belongs to integer values, is a perfect square, then there exists a number called a, such that 13x equals a minus 2a plus 2, Second one is I want you to show that there's at least one prime number p for which 13p plus 4 is a perfect square. So the first part, a, showing it if it's a perfect square there exists a number in this format. So if it's a perfect square, what that then means is that 13x plus 4 equals a squared, because it's that number a that exists. Now if I've got this, I can actually just rearrange it and have 13x equals a squared minus 4. Now if I've got a squared minus 4, I can factorise that, and I get 13x is equal to a minus 2, a plus 2. So just a wee bit of algebraic manipulation, and we get the solution for that one that we're after. Second part of the question was looking at using a prime number for this. So let's imagine that there's a prime number p that holds for this. So what that means is if there's a prime number p, 13p plus 4 is a perfect square. And if 13p plus 4 is a perfect square, what I can then say is that 13p equals a minus 2, a plus 2. Just as we had before, because the only difference is x represents all numbers. In this case, I'm choosing a specific p, where p represents only the prime numbers. 
Now, this left-hand side only has two prime factors. Remember, we can break numbers down into prime factors. 13p is the equivalent of 13 times p. Now, remember, p is a prime number, 13 is a prime number, so we've got that coming from there. If I then refer back to my unique factorization theorem, what that then tells me is that 13 times this prime number p has to equal a minus 2 a plus 2. So there's only one way of writing it. So what that means is if I were to equate both sides here, that would mean I'd have either a minus 2 equals 13 or a plus 2 equals 13. If I then solve both of these, a minus 2 is 13, that means a is equal to 15. a plus 2 is 13, that means a equals 11. What I now have is that a must be 15 or a must be 11. So if I take a being 15, what that then means is my two factors are 13 and 17. If I take a being equal to 11, I've got two factors, which are 9 and 13. So what that then means is that a has to be one of these two values, and my p has to be one of these values here, such that this equates out here. If I was to check all these values and work it through, what I then find is that a equals 15 gives me a solution p equal to 17 for this setup here, just by checking with the values that I've got. So put them in here, check what I've got there. So working with this and that fundamental theorem that we had earlier, so the unique factorization theorem, this allows me to evaluate that and equate elements of both sides together such that I can solve the question. So we have to remember all of these parts, how to work with them, what it means when we're talking about prime decomposition, and the ideas associated with it, including unique factorization theorem, i.e. the fundamental theorem of arithmetic.